What's going on folks? It's me, your friendly neighborhood entomologist, and I have been out in the field studying the bugs because they are back in a big way here in BT9 uh, using the X-Antibody engine. So let's take a look at a quick deck profile featuring green X-Antibody with the Quagamon line. So taking a look at the deck, the three words that come to mind when I talk about green X-Antibody is fast, strong, and control. Uh, the, the deck has tons of tools to control the board, and one of those involves the resting mechanic. And so because of that, we're going to be running four copies of the level 2 Gumimon, who whenever you rest a Digimon once per turn, can draw a card. Referring to the strength of the deck, one of those uh, sources comes from the level 3 here, Kokuamon from BT1. You're going to need four copies of this guy. On Inheritance, if you have a level 6 or higher Digimon, he gets Security Attack plus 1. Uh, big bug, hit hard, there's not a lot of complexity to that one. Shifting over to the speed of the deck. The X antibody cards do require you to gather a lot of pieces very quickly, and one of those ways is by using the Kokuamon X antibody, who on play or on Digivolve allows you to look at the top three cards of your deck, grab a machine or an insect and an X antibody card, and then add them to your hand. And because he's zero cost from the Kokuamon, it's super useful into extra cycling and extra draw. And Kokuamon is one cost, but this deck is relatively cheap as far as its distribution costs are concerned, so don't worry about that too much. But again, four copies of this bad boy. As I mentioned, the deck is pretty cheap on Digivolves, and one of the ways it uh, does that is by playing two of, of the EX1 Tentomon, who on Inheritance, whenever you attack, the next time you would Digivolve that turn into an Insect or an Ancient Insect type, you can reduce the Digivolution cost by one. Because the X Antibody allows you to Digivolve while attacking, this effect is super useful in being able to attack, use his effect first in the uh, effect order, and then use the X Antibody effect to Digivolve the Digimon and make that cost reduced as well. So rounding out the level 3s, we're going to have a little bit of disruption from the BT3 Terriermon. He's very useful because a lot of colors are running the memory boosts and other ways to gain memory during the turn outside of tamers. And so he shuts that off so that players cannot make these big plays and potentially swing tempo in their favor. So I mentioned that the deck does focus on power, speed, and control. One of those control tools is going to be in the form of your EX1 4 copies of Kuwagamon. He rests a Digimon with 3,000 DP or less on your opponent's side of the board at the beginning of your turn. But more importantly, he has the Inheritance effect of whenever you destroy a Digimon by battle. If your opponent has another rested Digimon, you can opt to choose that Digimon, and you're, during your opponent's next active phase, it will not become active, essentially freezing it on the board. Looking at the next set of level 4s, I've got four copies of the BT9 Kuwagamon X Antibody, who no effect does Digivolve from the Kuwagamon for zero but does give you piercing on inheritance, which is very important for being able to control the board and uh, make security checks at the same time. And then rounding out the level fours, I've got three copies of the BT3 Stingmon. Good old Stingmon here, really, really cheap Digivolve for one to a level four. What's more important though, is he makes your opponent really hesitant to put any Digimon down because on inheritance, whenever he destroys Digimon by battle, uh, you gain one memory once per turn. All right, so shifting gears, moving up to the level fives, the ultimates. First up, I've got four copies of BT1 Okuamon. Very nice and cheap evolve cost for level five at two. And then on inheritance, whenever you destroy an opponent's Digimon by battle, gain plus one memory. What's nice and different about the effect here from the Stingmon effect before is that this one is not locked to once per turn. So if you can unrest and attack again, you'll gain another memory. So rounding out our level fives, we're gonna have, of course, the X antibody version of the Okuamon from BT9. Digivolves from Okuamon for zero, important to note. Additionally, whenever he digivolves, if you have an Okuamon in his sources or an X-Antibody option card in his sources, you can rest one of your opponent's Digimon. And then if he's in the middle of an attack, you can actually change the attack target during the attack to a rested Digimon on your opponent's side of the board. The idea is you can rest a Digimon and then immediately attack it and destroy it. Additionally, during your turn, if he digivolves into an insect-type Digimon, then the cost is reduced by one. So, you know, this plus the Okuamon's effect plus the Tentomon's effect really, really makes this a memory efficient deck. So getting to the big boys of the deck, the level sixes, we've got first up two copies of the promo Grand Quagamon. Digiburge two, give one of your Digimon on the board, security attack plus one for the turn. This plus all of the source cards that the X antibody engine affords you over you know a normal Digivolution uh, set, plus the Kokuamon's inheritance effect of security attack plus one means that you can give this guy tons of security attack in the turn and potentially make an OTK swing. And then finally, the absolute star of the deck, the new BT9 Grandis Kuwagamon. Digivolve cost for four from a level five or one cost if you're coming from a Grand Kuwagamon. Because of the Tentomon effects and some of the other various effects on the board, you'll either have the memory to continue your turn or you can reduce the Digivolution cost so that you can continue your turn either way. Now, what's nice is on Digivolve, you rest one of your opponent's Digimon, 
And then if he's in the middle of an attack, you can switch the target to one of your opponent's rested Digimon. So you can initially declare security attack, and then you can Digivolve with the X Antibody uh, option card, and then change that attack target to one of your opponent's Digimon. And then if he has piercing, then you get that security check anyway. Additionally, he does have a natural plus 4,000 on your turn like a lot of the Grand Kuwagamons have. So he's a 16,000 on your turn, which means he'll get over things like uh, uh, Weverin's Breath or Breath of Weverin uh, and other things like that. And then finally, at the end of your attack, at the end of your attack here, uh, if he has Grand Kawagamon in his sources or an ex-antibody option card in his sources, then you can rest one of your opponent's Digimon and then unrest this guy to make a potential second swing. You know, this combined off of the security attack pluses from the Grand Kawagamon makes for a very lethal turn with this guy here. Okay, so we're going to shift gears here and take a look at some of the options in the deck. And the first one is going to be a very common one. We've got the X Antibody option itself, the key card, or one of the key cards from BT9, the entire set. Uh, if you want to know more about why this card is important, you can take a look at some of the other uh, X Antibody decks I've made. I did a video on blue X Antibody as well, if you want to go check that out. I'll put a link to that somewhere up, uh, I think, up here. But going over this guy one more time here, if you have a Digimon, you can ignore the color requirements, which means you can just play this card whenever you have a Digimon on the board for free. And then uh, if it's checked for security, you get memory plus one, and then this card gets added to your hand. And additionally, you can just put this underneath a Digimon on the board, and when you do, that basically locks that Digimon's uh, sources. So, for example, if you put this under a Digimon and your opponent tries to source strip one, you cannot because of this card's effect here. It will prevent the source strip. If they do have source strip two, though, things they, it can go above this card, but if it's source strip one, which most things are, then this will stop it. And then finally, this card allows you to Digivolve a Digimon into an X antibody during an attack. And because of the way this uh, bug deck works, because you have to declare an attack and then you get effects after the attack is already declared, this card is super useful for that. Keep in mind that whenever you Digivolve that Digimon though, you do have to pay the Digivolution cost. So you'll Digivolve, go over the memory, potentially destroy your opponent's Digimon, and then get the memory back onto your side of the, the memory counter. Oh yeah, just a heads up, three copies of this bad boy. Um, I've seen some people run two. Uh, just for the bug deck, because I think it's so important to get to that Grandest Kawagamon so fast, I like to include three here. Next up, if for whatever reason you're having trouble clearing your opponent's Digimon, or some of them are unrested and you want to be able to target them down while they're small, and you don't have one of your level 5s, level 6s yet, what you can do is opt in for the two copies of the BT1 Flower Cannon, allowing you to rest one of your opponent's Digimon on the board for two. Additionally, really, really good security effect. Everybody except your opponent's blockers get rested during uh, their turn, which effectively just ends an opponent's turn because they can't make any more attacks. And actually now there are actually quite few Digimon who have blocker on their own turn. Usually a lot of the Digimon in the meta right now have blocker on your opponent's turn, uh, which this effect wouldn't have to worry about. And then rounding out our options, I've got two copies of the new BT9 Grandest Scissors. Four cost here. It allows you to rest one of your opponent's Digimon and then, uh, if you have an insect type Digimon, you can make that Digimon active again, and then you can force an attack on it. That's so important. I want to reiterate that. This card allows you to attack no matter what. Because green is known for not having great just wipe on the board, they have to use attacks to get rid of other opponent's Digimon. So because this card allows you to force an attack, it means that you can play Digimon that turn and then attack with it using Grand Scissors. That's what's important here. You want to save this card as a way to put yourself back into the game if you fall behind on board or in tempo. Additionally, on security, whenever this card is checked, you can rest one of your opponent's Digimon. Winding down here, taking a look at our tamers to close things out. First, I've got three copies of the BT3 Kenichi Joji. A minimum three memory tamer, which means you'll start every turn with at least three memory when you can get this guy down. And then additionally, whenever one of your blue or green Digimon attacks, uh, if it destroys an opponent's Digimon by battle and only the opponent's Digimon is destroyed, then you can rest this guy and gain plus one memory. So, you know, cards like this, the Okuamon, the Stingmon, and the Tintamon really help to decrease and help you conserve and be as efficient with your memory as possible. And then the last couple cards in the deck, we've got three copies of good old Cool Boy from BT9. You know, I really didn't like this guy very much, but... The fact that he's a two cost tamer, which provides draw and memory, is fantastic. So whenever you play this guy, you look at the top three cards of your deck, you can grab one X antibody card and an X antibody Digimon, and then add them both to your hand. And then additionally, whenever you would Digivolve a Digimon into a, another Digimon of the same level with X antibody and its traits, then you can draw one and gain plus one memory by resting this guy. So he makes those zero cost X antibody Digivolves, plus one memory in your favor, plus another card draw. So super, super good. 
get as many copies of this guy as you possibly can if you're going to be building a lot of decks in BT9 because he's going to be useful in pretty much all of them. So just looking at how the deck operates very quickly, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this one out. Um, it really is just build a big a tower you possibly can and just try to get an OTK or to control the board out and just win that way. You're going to go from your, to your Kokuamon here, your X antibody of course, your Kawagamon, the Kawagamon Antibody, your Okuamon, and then you're going to get to likely either the Okuamon in your turn or then get to the Okuamon Antibody X, and then uh, you get your pop-off turn typically after that. The fun really starts once you hit your Grand Kawagamon here because you've got all these sources here to just make Security Attack Pluses. So, you know, you can strip out these two. That's Security Attack Plus One. You can strip out these two if you don't need the memory of security attack plus one again. And then technically you could strip out these two here or th these two, but I like to keep the X antibody uh, Kawagamon because it does have piercing. Uh, so typically you get security attack plus two off of that plus the plus one here, which means it's a three swing. And then strap on your X antibody here, make your attack Digivolve into Grandis Kawagamon for four security swings, unrest him and then do it again to end the game. It's really not a difficult game plan at all. I mean, it, <laughs> you know, build big bugs, swing in game, and then if somehow this one dies from security swing or something like that during that time, you also wanna try and build a second one in your raising area so you can promote and just do the same thing all over again. Very simple deck, but very, very effective. I've seen some interesting builds where people have opted to tech in the red hero tamer to rest him and give the Digimon plus 2000 DP, but typically you don't need that. Uh, but you do wanna have that in case you do run a delicate plan. Again, I've seen some red splashes in these decks just because delicate plan is such a powerful option, being able to really stop the uh, destruction effects from security control and things like yellow. And so yeah, that's gonna be it for this one, folks. Like I said before, bugs are back in BT9 in a big way, and if you are a fan of the BT7 bug deck, then BT9 is definitely going to be a happy place for you. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here. You guys, do me a favor before you get out of here, hit the subscribe button for me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Super useful, cheap evolve cost, which is nice, and then on inheritance, whenever you destroy Digimon's Digimon by battle. Whenever you destroy Digimon's Digimon. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Tell me more East, please.